uh, confident in just the team's overall um, ability to beat you in each. And so every single time that I walk into the locker room, I, I look at the post that we that, that we had there with them holding the musket, and I just I'm just ready. It just makes me uh, makes me ready. It makes me uh, anticipate for uh, for uh, UNH because I know we can beat them, and I know we will beat them. Yeah, it was great. You know, I think, um, you know, obviously all off season, it's the first game, it's the musket. A lot goes into that, and certainly with it being uh, UNH, it kind of ramps it up even more. But uh, just proud of the guys, um, the way they competed and, and kind of executed. We talked about it, playing a disciplined football game, and they came out and they did that. And certainly, I don't think you ever imagined it to go kind of the way it did, but um, for them to, to get the musket back and just to see their confidence in the way they prepared and, and to go out there and do that was pretty special. When I got here in uh, January 2011, they had won the previous year, so I got to see it a little bit. But I, yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen it in like seven or eight years. So um, it was pretty funny after the game. We didn't know what to do because uh, no one on our team really uh, had ever won it. So um, just to see it in there, um, really the days after, because that space in the locker room obviously has been bare um, for the last uh, eight years. So to see it in there, it just kind of reminds you of how hard you worked um, and, and ultimately how all the kids played and uh, you know it's all about them. I said that after the game and I was just so proud of them. They actually asked me after Fitzy scored, um, some of the seniors came out to me when we knew the game was, I think it was like a minute and 30 left and it was 35-7. They actually asked me where they kept the musket and I didn't have an answer for them in terms of where it was in the field. Um, I think someone brought it out for them. They put it on like the opposite 20 yard line and then we finally saw it. And uh, you know, like I said, we, we haven't done it before. These kids have never seen it. Um, I only saw it because I was here in 2011, but none of these guys were even part of the program yet. So uh, just to see them get to experience, open that up and seeing it, um, you know, a lot of our guys didn't even know it didn't work. You know, we didn't even know that it didn't fire anymore and that that's kind of like sawed off on the end. So um, just to see our guys really, like I said, the results of your preparation and, and how much you talk about winning a big time game like that at home to start the season and just to just to see that result uh, and smiles on their faces and just um, how hard they worked, it, it was pretty special. Yeah, it, no, it was. It was pretty awesome, you know, obviously without the students being here yet, to see some of them come out and support us and certainly to have, I believe it was uh, upwards of seven, 8,000 there without the students um, just goes to show you how special this place is. Uh, you know, Black Bear Nation was um, behind us and we feel that, uh, especially on the home sideline when we, when we have a big play or, or something good happens for us, you know, you feel that energy, um, you hear it, and, and certainly that night they had plenty to cheer about, so it was good. I think our schedule to start is, is very difficult, uh, especially the first five games. You know, we had UNH who was ranked seventh. We're going to go on the road now for two FBS games, and then, you know, Yale is the Ivy League champion, and Villanova, um, who just most recently beat an FBS school, will be probably ranked in the top ten. So it doesn't get any easier, but um, certainly getting this win, I think it just uh, kind of gives you the results. I think we talked a lot about um, preparing the right way and doing the right things, and sometimes when you lose fourth quarter games like we did to UNH the last couple years previous, it, um, the young men don't see the results, so they kind of make you doubt about what's going on. And I think now that they've seen the result of beating them um, in a convincing fashion and getting the musket back, it kind of tells them that we have a we have a strong belief in what we're doing. And if they just trust that, um, we'll continue to you know, play well in, in future games. I think for the guys, um, 
you know, to get back to that. Um, certainly when it happened, we weren't in camp yet and they were kind of just working out in the summer, but uh, football has helped. Um, time will ultimately help. Um, certainly nothing's going to ever you know, help us get over the fact that he's not here anymore with us, but um, I think the, the way that the guys have handled it, um, the strength that his mother has shown us um, through how she's dealing with it along with her family is, has strengthened us um, and told us that um, you know, we needed to at some point get back to doing what he loved to do and that was playing football and I think the way we um, played in our first real team event since that happened was just uh, was pretty special and I know he was, he was hanging out with us that night. I think it was more for us just having a head start on building his foundation and his culture before the season start, and that's very important for us. I think it was more for us as a staff getting to know each other, um, getting to know the players on a more personal um, point of view instead of just basketball, because when season starts, it's just basketball. Costa Rica, we got a chance to see him off the court, hang with them on the court. Um, our families got to interact with them. My stepmom and um, little brother got a chance to go. So, you know, we've seen our players in different roles. You know, we got a chance to see who the leaders are, who can be the potential leaders, um, who are the quiet ones, who are the jokesters. So it was a really good trip um, overall for us just to get to know each other and kind of enjoy each other while doing the game we love. Well, uh, to me personally, being a senior, it, it was a big difference at first, but uh, it's been a really fun adjustment, you know, just I get to see basketball kind of like in a different way. Baron, uh, the way he teaches his offense, it's something completely different than what I've ever been taught. And to me, it's, it's really interesting just because I'm kind of like learning how to play basketball again. But going into my senior year, I get to try to put it all together in this one year, you know, so it's really fun. It's really interesting. Uh, I get to learn on the go. so. It just makes it that much more fun. Yeah. And we got to play at, uh, I think it was called Banco Nacional Arena, and it was like a 4,000 seat arena. It was it was awesome. Our first game, uh, we played against the Canadian, the defending Canadian national champions. They were a really good team, very scrappy. They were talented, they were tough. They beat us the first game. Uh, then we played a Costa Rican team the second game, and uh, we actually had to play in a half court setting the second game because the other rim was broken that day. So uh, it, it was good though, because we got to really run a lot of our plays and stuff. We really got to work on our stuff. And then to cap it off, we played that Canadian team again uh, the third day. And it was a really fun game. You know, uh, we really, it was awesome to see how we really improved on the things that we were messing up on the first time against them. And uh, we ended up bringing the game to overtime and we actually ended up coming out with the win. So it's cool to get over that first hurdle as a team so early and it's fun to, you know, kind of get that win and see what it feels like and go through that type of stuff so early on in August. Winning, definitely. <laughs> For me, it's, you know, I would like to see uh, the men's program here just feel, you know, what I felt on the women's side, just winning games and getting the support. I think the community is gonna just love the way this team plays. I mean, they play hard, they play together. They're a lot of fun, um, just great characters, um, great for the community, and it, it, it's gonna be a different level of basketball. Honestly, the trip was the highlight of the, the whole trip for me was, of course, you know, being there with the team and, you know, 
walking on the court every time and realize, okay, yeah, I am the only woman doing this. You know, it's like, oh, I got superpowers, kinda. It, it, it was really cool. But um, it was our uh, first game and, you know, my baby brother is 12 and he got a chance to go on a trip with me. And um, the other coaches were assisting with something else during the time. And I picked, I, um, Isaiah said, G um, Gino, his name is Genoa, and they nicknamed him before the trip was over Gino. So he goes by Gino now, thanks to the men's basketball team. So Gino comes on the court and he's my assistant coach. And I have the video where during the game, he's passing to the guys and things like that. So um, I was so grateful and like, you know, like, like a proud big sister that I got to share that moment with my brother. It was cooler than here. Really? Yeah, it was. It, you know, it downpoured, you know, maybe an hour a day, but it was like really, really just mellow. It wasn't super hot. Um, it was just an amazing trip. I mean, you'll, you'll see the pictures that I, you know, took, you know, being in the rainforest, the zip lining was unbelievable. It was like, unreal like the guys just seeing all of them like just experience that summer like it was it was nice to see them come back and be like wow that's the best summer I've ever had you know like they really enjoy being with each other and you know just experiencing that in Costa Rica uh, <laughs> uh, for me zipline it was really scary but uh I'm happy that he made us all do it because once we were up there and once we just got to actually do it, like that's like that's something I'll remember for the rest of my life. I'm me personally, I'm I'm afraid of heights. I'm really afraid of heights and just getting myself to actually do it and some of the other guys as well. Once we're actually out there, it, it's so much fun and it's something that I know we'll all remember as as a unit, something that we got to do together. It, I want to say in total it was a half mile long, but I, I'm not I'm not sure. <laughs> then we, we did some other stuff too. Uh, we went to like waterfall gardens. We got to see a lot of uh, the animals that are just in the rainforest. There, there were a lot of rescued animals that we got to see. And on top of that, we got to see some beautiful waterfalls in the middle of the rainforest. It was awesome. Uh, we got to go visit an orphanage too in San Jose. We were in the capital, and that was really good too because well, Baron he emphasizes a lot about having perspective and realizing how lucky we are to be in the position that we're in. And being able to see that, it just helps us be that much more grateful for the things that you know we're afforded just by being here at UMaine. The guys enjoyed it. Um, it was one scene um, during the orphanage that was really powerful. Uh, we were walking down into the classroom and it was a room full of about 15 or 16 toddlers and they were crying and this orphanage only has you know is um, made up of volunteers so the room had maybe two teachers and literally it was natural instinct for coaches you know parents whoever was on our trip players to just walk in a room and pick up the babies to like start consoling them and holding them till they stop crying it was really really powerful to see that happen and they just did it naturally it was it was Awesome. She, uh, the lady that was there, she kind of gave us a run through of how they operate things and the things she was telling us, uh, we got to see the size of a kitchen. It was a small kitchen and she was telling us they feed over 2,000 people a day there and you know it's not just children there, it's people that they can only take care of people up to I think 12 years old and then after that some of them obviously they don't have the support system to get themselves up on their feet so they end up falling back and they try their best to help those people out too. So they're really trying to help an entire community out and they do it by trying to spread the word of God. And they don't have that many resources, but they do the best that they can with it. And it was amazing to see just how much impact just that lady and her husband was doing. And you know, the fact that she can do that with so little resources, it, it just helps to see how much that we can do individually with how much that we have here. So how did we get to uh, Ken Ralph, um, President Hunter, uh, and then President-elect, uh, Farini Mundy uh, agreed that uh, we would go to his search. And I spent a good deal of time talking with him about uh, what University of Maine is, uh, what it can be, and how, how should we approach athletics, uh, both from a modern perspective uh, and in a modern university, and how can you get a, an athletic department that 
uh, fits the scope, scale, and intent of a world-class university like UMaine. And that required that we find somebody with a community-centric focus, somebody who believes in athletes, uh, somebody who believes in the uh, staff, somebody who believes in the coaches, uh, but writ large, somebody who believes in the community, the state uh, in which the university is located, and somebody who gets the main premise and the main promise. And Ken uh, ticked many boxes uh, for me and for the committee. Uh, he's got great roots, deep roots. He's coming home. Uh, his uh, family is in New Hampshire. He knew all about the main uh, brand. Uh, he knew about what we were as an athletics program, what we were as a university, and he knew how important this was to the state of Maine. So I am delighted that Ken Ralph will join the University of Maine as our next Director of Athletics. This is a terrific, a terrific step uh, for us at the university. It is um, a wonderful hire for us. want to warmly welcome him and his wife Mary to the Black Bear family. I know they will be energetic, active participants with all of us. I already am seeing this from Ken even before he's officially on board. Ken brings a wealth of experience, Robert's told you a little bit about this, and accomplishment in athletics. Uh, I'm impressed by his unequivocal commitment to both excellence and integrity. Uh, that comes through in every conversation with Ken. We will see it uh, constantly, uh, I think, as we get to know him and work with him, as, and as everyone in athletics um, will see, he will be a terrific resource and a wonderful leader for us. This institution matters. The University of Maine matters. Um, it's a state flagship institution, but it's a state flagship institution of a people who are proud of their state of residency, they're proud of their heritage, they're proud uh, to be from the state of Maine. It's something I actually said, I think, in the, in the search committee meetings is, you know, when you talk to somebody and you find out they're from Maine, they tell you they're from Maine, and they're proud of being from Maine, and they'll tell you exactly where in Maine they're from. And this athletic department represents all the residents of the state of Maine. It doesn't matter if you're from Cape Elizabeth, if you're from Aroostook County. Uh, and the Black Bear sports matter. And we have to run our business in a manner that makes all residents of the state of Maine proud to call the Black Bears their team. And we also have to have full brand penetration throughout the state. We want to make sure that everybody in Maine feels connected to this institution and feels connected to this athletic department. We are a very public face of this, not just the institution, but of the state of Maine. We have to carry our business accordingly. We can't compromise, we can't take shortcuts. Uh, one of the things you heard Dr. Fernie Mundy talk about was integrity, and that has to be a hallmark of how we do our business. I think folks can take a look at what's going on in the world of sports right now, and there's some trouble spots out there. You know, if money and ego and other issues have gotten in the way, and that's not education. That's not what we can be about. We have to hold ourselves to a higher standard. We're gonna get a lot of scrutiny. Again, because people care so deeply about our sense of place here. Um, so we will carry our business to a very, very high level. And we'll do that with a great sense of pride, and we will do that with a great sense of dignity. Um, and we're gonna make everybody in the state of Maine proud to have the Black Bears be their team. And again, no compromises there. I've also been in the industry 28 years. I've been an AD for 16 years, okay? I, by the time you get to this point in this industry, people know what you're all about. You know, people have already formed their opinion of you. I don't need to polish a resume and I don't need to impress anybody anymore. It's one of the nice things about getting older. Um, it just really is. And for me, um, I look at change as such a disruptive force. You know, and excellence doesn't happen by spontaneous combustion. You don't have a flash and then a puff of smoke and magically excellence happens. This is a process. This is about pursuing, pursuing constant progress a relentless march towards constant progress. That's where organizational excellence comes from, not a flash and pan. True excellence in all its forms is about sustained success. And that's what we want here at the University of Maine. We want sustained success. And make no mistake about it, um, Division I athletics is not for the timid. Division I athletics is not for the faint of heart. And if we're gonna have the type of success that we think we can have here at Maine, we are going to need a full organizational commitment to excellence from the university in all its forms, from the community, from our fans, from our sponsors, from our donors, from our longtime family, friends, and foundations who've provided leadership gifts. We're gonna need help from all quarters to get there. We have to do this as a community. We cannot stand alone and just expect excellence. We've gotta go out and pursue it. 
We have to provide a strategic direction. We have to implement a plan. And we have to go after it with dog determination. And we cannot, give, we cannot back down. We cannot cut corners. We cannot compromise. I've always been in the, you know, the, the thought that when you take a dream and you can turn it into reality and you do the work to make that dream come true, uh, that's when extraordinary things happen. And that's when true excellence can be found. So if it's okay with you, I'm going to continue to be known as a dreamer. Um, and I'd like all of you to dream with me. But more than anything, if you're going to do that, I want you to dream big. So thank you for the introduction here in Maine, and I'm proud to be a black bear. Thanks very much. Bold meets sweet. With Duncan's new brown sugar cold brew. Sweetly balanced with brown sugar. We've been doing business with Hammond Lumber for about 15 years. The most important thing Hammond Lumber gives us is customer service. We have a lot of jobs going, typically four to six at one time, and we need truck deliveries on each of those once a day. So we expect multiple trucks, which Hammond Lumber delivers on a regular basis for us. The things that are important to me are being able to trust my sales rep, trust the pricing, trust the delivery, and overall trust the service that Hammond Lumber provides us. You support your black bears at the game. Why not support them everywhere you go? The exclusive black bear debit card only at Maine Savings. The black bear debit card is free to you and supports the Alphon Fund each time you use your card for a purchase. Just open a red wallet account at Maine Savings. Stop into our College Avenue branch or any of our other convenient branches. Show your pride. Make a difference. The exclusive Black Bear debit card only at Maine Savings. Learn more at mainesavings.com. Here at T-Spark of Revolution and Patriots are more than a team. They're the foundation of our family tree. Some call it Yankee land, others call it New England. We call it home. It's not for everybody, but for the ones willing to create a way through, there's a reward. You can't show it off. It's not a trophy. It's a feeling. It's a sense of belonging. It's who we are and what we stand for. We are Fisher Nation. Look at those guys. Triumphing over the afternoon. Because they went on a Dunkin' run and got $2 snacks. Hey, guys. Hey. The Dunkin' Run menu. Delicious $2 afternoon snacks. We had an um, athletic talent show that was put on by our SAC community, and uh, originally my teammate, who left already, um, <laughs> was supposed to go, but she ended up having a concussion. So I ended up kind of being like, I got a text message from my teammate who was also on like the SAC saying, hey, can you perform? And I said, sure. So I ended up uh, playing guitar and singing and ended up winning, I guess. <laughs> When I was trying to figure out what kind of organizations I wanted to help, I had talked to like my coaches about like um, either some way of helping like kids in sports or just like kids in general. And then when my coach brought to my attention the great work they were doing, I thought that would be a perfect way for us to um, help in the community and keep it local and still be able to um, help children because that's what I really wanted to do. Um, as an international student, I didn't know about any um, organizations in the area and my coach brought to my attention the great work you guys are doing
Hi, I'm Claire Fogler. And I'm Avery Fogler. And we are from Stonyville Dairy Farm in Exeter. Do you have a picky eater at home? Can't get them to eat their vegetables? Why not try a smoothie? Just combine one frozen banana, one cup blueberries, one cup frozen spinach, one tablespoon honey, two thirds cup of milk, and one third cup of plain Greek yogurt. Blend and enjoy. Ready, set, feel up. This copyrighted telecast is the property of Black Bear Sports Properties, LLC, under rights granted by the University of Maine. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, reproduction, or other dissemination or use of this telecast, or any part of it without the express written consent of Black Bear Sports Properties, LLC, is prohibited.